Hey everybody, this is my 55 gallon T-bar tank and I recently put some new lighting on this tank. I was concerned at the time about whether or not it would be sufficient for my plants and so far it seems to be doing very well for my plants. Now if you've got a planted tank or if you grow house plants indoors or anything you've probably come across the term PAR, P-A-R. And if you're not familiar with what that means, it generally represents photosynthetically active radiation. And it's a way to measure the amount of light that gets to your plants that's usable light that they can actually use for the process of photosynthesis. So it's an important number to understand. And we will get into talking about PAR specifically, but not in this video. It's not as important in our aquariums as you might think. It's not as significant a number as you might think. But I did mention in the other video that when you buy lights, whether it's compact fluorescents or tubes or LEDs, there's a lot of labeling on lights that can get confusing, whether it's color temperature or lumens or wattage or wattage equivalent. And one number you'll see fairly frequently when you're looking at lights is PAR 38. Now, you will see PAR 20 or PAR 30, uh, but PAR 38 is very common. It's, it's one of the more frequent ones you'll see. And I've had people ask me in the past, you know, I've got this kind of plant. Would a PAR 38 light be sufficient for this kind of plant or that kind of plant? So that is not what PAR 38 represents. PAR 38 is a different measurement and representation and that's exactly what I'm talking about. It gets kind of confusing. There's a lot of parts of the labeling that are not industry standards. They're just sort of generally accepted terminology and different companies use different sort of terms to get the same point across. So we're going to go over and have a look. I actually just bought some lights recently that are PAR 38 and we're going to have a look at their packaging and some of the more common uh, labeling you'll see on that and we're going to go over discuss a little bit and explain some of the stuff that's on there maybe take a little bit of the mystery out of buying lights so hang on half a second and here we are now both of these lights are par 38 and one of them I find kind of interesting but we'll get into that in a moment so par 38 is typically what you're going to see lights that are shaped like this and what that representation is is a parabolic aluminumized reflector so you've got the parabolic reflector that's shiny silver and the 38 is the size measurement it's the diameter and I don't know why but the lighting industry likes to measure things in eighths of an inch that's why we've got these tubes here so par 38 is describing the type of reflector and then it's 38 eighths of an inch or for normal people it's four and three quarter inches so that basically just describes that type of light and it's generally a floodlight or maybe sort of a wide angle spot the reason I find this one interesting these are both LEDs but if you look you can see this light itself actually has individual little chips and individual little lenses and everything else so I think each one of these little reflectors in here has the diode at the bottom it probably still has a parabolic aluminumized reflector and then overall it's still 38 eighths of an inch so technically it is the parabolic aluminumized reflector it just has a lot of little ones one for each chip and then of course it's still the correct measurement so it's still technically a par 38 now the reason I've got these two lights up here is this one you probably recognize as what will be called a T8 and this one is the little high output T5. That number is 5 eighths of an inch. Again, the industry, they just like to measure things in eighths of an inch. These are 8 eighths of an inch. Or again, for normal people, 1 inch diameter tubes. If you've got the old school, the big fat ones, those were T12s. They were 12 eighths of an inch or an inch and a half in diameter. And the pins on the... T12 and the T8 
are the same. So if you've got an old school fixture that takes T12s, you can put T8s in it. You can upgrade your fixtures. Now, if you wanted to, I suppose you could put old T12 fixtures in a T8, provided there's enough room physically for the width of the tube to fit in the reflector. But the pin configuration on the T12 and the T8 is identical. Once you've moved up to the T5, you've got that very narrow pin configuration and you've got to go with a fixture that is designed for the T5s. So if you're looking for tubes, that's what the T number represents. So another thing you're going to see is wattage. Now if you've got LEDs or if you've got compact fluorescence, you're probably going to see two numbers. You're going to see, in this case, 14 watts, and then you're going to see 90 watt equivalent. This one is 90 watt replacement but it's 11 watt LED. So that simply means this is an 11 watt LED and it would replace a standard old school incandescent 90 watt light bulb. This one is a 14 watt LED and it's claiming that it too would replace an old standard incandescent 90 watt light bulb. Again, these are not industry standards. There's no uh, lighting police that are going to go around and yell at somebody if they're not telling exactly the truth about how bright these lights are, how many watts they are, etc. So the higher quality, the more reputable the brand, the more likely you are to have accurate information here. But they all generally fall within reason. Now when you get to LEDs, a lot of time this uh, wattage number is not the actual draw from the wall, it's what the chip is rated at. So that's not necessarily an accurate number. So again, it's, it's hard to tell. It might be. This might be drawing 11 watts from the wall. It might be rated for 11 watts, but only be drawing six and a half. It's hard to say. I just sort of go by what it says on the box and I assume that's what it's drawing and that's just sort of the safe way to go. So another thing you're going to see on here is going to be your lumens. Now lumens is a brightness designation that is specific to we humans. What your plants see and lumens don't have anything to do with each other because plants absorb different wavelengths of light than the way our eyes perceive light and so on and so forth. So lumens are not necessarily a good thing to judge when you're talking about growing plants under it, but it is a value you can give the light to give you some sort of idea of what we're talking about. So lumens is generally just going to be how bright the light appears to you, and it is generally, um, a thousand lumens is pretty bright. It's it's not, you know, insane bright. It wouldn't be considered some sort of high intensity light, but you're probably going to have to get into a pretty large compact fluorescent light before you get up to a thousand lumens. Again, that's kind of high for a 90 watt light. Um, this one, I don't see the lumen designation on this one. This one's got a thousand lumens. So this one's a thousand, this one's a thousand fifty. Again, probably pretty close if you put them uh, on a meter to look at the lumens that would show you how bright that's going to appear to us. Another common number you might see is this E26 base. That just stands for Edison 26. I believe the 26 is... I'm, honestly, I'm not sure what that 26 is now that I'm thinking about it. I just know that the E26 base is a standard Edison 26 base, and it's your basic, common, everyday light bulb screw base. If you get into like the weird, uh, I think it's a C10, you know, now you're getting into bulbs that screw into like refrigerators and things like that. If you get into the mogul bases, those are like the really big barn lights that have that giant um, fat thread on it. So the E26 is going to be your standard. A lot of times it'll also be called a medium base is going to be what your E26 is. Another number that is significant to look at is going to be your color temperature. Now the color temperature is going to be important to look at the number because see how this one is called a crystal white glow? Well this one is the same color temperature. They're both 5000K and this one is called daylight. So crystal white glow, daylight, who, again, there's no light bulb police that are going to go make them call it the same thing. And I've seen daylight listed everything from 
uh, 3000K all the way up to 5500K, I've seen various brands list as daylight. So you can't go by that. You have to go by the number. And what that number is, I don't know why I keep going out of focus every time I stick my hand in the camera there. What that number represents is degrees on the scale of Kelvin. So if you heat up pretty much anything, everything heats up and glows at the same temperature. So if you take a, an arbitrary block of material and you begin heating it up, when it reaches 2700 degrees, 3000 degrees Kelvin, it's going to be glowing a certain temperature. Just like steel glows red and the hotter it gets, it gets yellow and eventually it gets up into that sort of glowing white, bright white color. Well, these colors don't necessarily represent the actual color temperature. There's, you know, this light is not that blue. But that's what this scale represents. Warm, again, you can think of as being sort of, you know, orange is warm, and then blue you can think of as cold. But in reality, this, this number, the higher this number gets, the hotter that represents so you go from glowing a sort of soft orange color and the hotter it gets the brighter whitish bluish it gets and once you get above about 10,000 K you get up into those actinic lights that are for coral reefs you get to 14,000 K that like makes your eyes water it doesn't even look like normal light anymore because there's so much blue in it but again it doesn't look like this and this of course is saying 5000 K and 5000 K is you know probably about this color temperature you can see it's not blue at all it's just a nice bright white I really like that 5000 K uh, area of the the color spectrum so that's a good sort of visual representation of what you're looking at but again these aren't real colors but 5000 K is the number to go by don't go by daylight or bright white or what have you it's generally represented as warm and cool although this one says cold I guess that's probably just a odd translation but it's generally represented as warm and cool it might be represented as soft down on the warm end so soft and warm are sometimes interchangeable and sometimes like cool and bright bright white will sometimes be interchangeable with that cool white so another thing to look at on here I know there was a couple things back here that I wanted to point out the CRI is the final thing that I can think of on this box to consider CRI stands for color rendering index and then you'll see a number underneath of it and this says 80 plus so that just means it's a minimum of 80 and what that means is if you were standing under true natural sunlight in the middle of the day and took a photo of that and then you compared it to this light this light will represent that at least 80 percent accurately now that's not a very good number if you get into some really really super high quality LEDs you can get all the way up to 95 or 96 on the color rendering scale and that's insane that is so good it's unbelievable most stuff you're gonna see that's good high quality lighting for photography use is gonna be between 85 and 90 so anything above 90 on that CRI is gonna be a really really high quality lighting as far as what you're looking at and how nice your fish and your plants and everything else are gonna look so that's not really an important number the important numbers you want to look at is going to be your lumens is going to tell you how bright it is and then your color temperature is going to tell you how sort of soft orangey glow or how sort of bluish bright white you're going to get none of that has anything to do with photosynthetically active radiation and how plants absorb light and the color spectrums that plants need to use generally you want to stick with a fairly high color temperature I'd say 5000 K or higher and that in short will just provide you with enough blue higher energy light that your plants will do okay under that under general circumstances and again in the very near future if you're subscribed you won't miss it uh, we will do a video coming up about the lighting and we'll talk specifically about par lighting and what par means and how all that good stuff works and everything else so thanks for watching this one hope that was educational hope that helped see you real soon in the next one thanks again for watching